Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Floor Planner. Hey, this is your monthly new features video to talk about the new advances that have occurred inside your platform for the month of August 2023, maybe just a little bit more than we normally have. We've had a lot of advances that have occurred. We've made some major changes inside Floor Planner. Um, I've had a lot of fun with them, had great feedback so far. Everybody's having a great time. I just wanna make sure I share them with you all so you have a, a good sense of what has occurred. Of course, they've all been listed for you um, and noted on your dashboard, but we're gonna take a little extra time and uh, really take some time to take a peek at each one of them. So let's get started. And we'll go over to my floor planner account, which shouldn't look very different from yours. I want to find you, let you know where to find where those advances and features are noted inside your platform. Because remember, they are occurring instantaneously for you inside the floor planner platform. It's just uh, nice to be uh, aware as to where you can find what's new. So if you go to your dashboard setting in the upper far upper left-hand corner of dashboard, you will gain the right-hand sidebar. And in that right-hand sidebar, the new features are listed right here. Um, and the most current new feature will be listed up here at the top. If you'd like to see, you know, more of them and what's occurred, you know, previously, I mean, all the way back to the last year, if you'd like to hit the more button up here in new features, and it'll take you to this site where all of the new advances have been listed for you. Uh, the programmers in the Netherlands have put this little composite together with quick videos, um, just to note uh, what has occurred and give you some descriptive information about it. Our last recording, we talked about and ended here at style boards and room styles. The fact that uh, room styles as collections of furnishings are migrating to work in sync with mood board style board presentations, which has been a feature for the past year inside Floor Planner. But now style boards have intelligence. So you can actually assign user um, roles, let's say, just say roles to the individual objects inside there where this is a bathtub. You can actually tell this image it actually is a bathtub. And by giving these roles uh, to these specific items, they will be able to place themselves in those room types, like a bathroom, um, based on the roles uh, and some algorithms. Um, to do some uh, geometry and placing those items into an empty room. So create a style board, assign roles to the individual items. And now you can drag a style board right into an empty room, a brand new room that you've created that has nothing in it. And all of a sudden, everything that's in your mood, your mood board style board will actually populate based on the algorithms uh, into that empty space and furnish it for you. Of course, from there, you have full freedom to delete delete items, move items, add from other collections, but a really great time saver to get you started. But that's where we left off. So changes that have occurred since then would be more style board tweaks that have occurred. Um, and there is a new startup board, if you will, which is really cool. So let's take a peek at that real quick. We're going to hop between here and our floor planner program real quick. And let's say we'd go to style boards on the far left hand side. We have a style boards tab, a style boards tab. We could just say, you know, we're going to create a brand new style board. And what you're going to gain is this new window. Um, and this is where we could just go ahead and in one place change the actual name that we want to create this new style board and name it accordingly. And you also have the options in here to be either the free style board as basic, um, which is an okay resolution, uh, certainly functioning, but uh, presentation wise, you may want to go ahead at this point and change the level of that style board to a premium level for the 4K pixel count. 
uh, increase. So the resolution is better on that image and it will be a one-time cost extension of the two credits um, to elevate that style board. Of course, you can then continue to work on that style board and edit it. And for all those functions that I described to you earlier, using this new style board, certainly for presentation and also using it as we did with room styles to use these board presentations to drag into empty rooms that you've created for others and uh, populate the rooms um, using the magic layout features. Um, so that's the new opening window for style boards and the ease of starting a new project. And then next on our list, This is pretty major. Uh, improved camera settings. Uh, in the past couple of months, we've even been offering additional training webinars on this, on our live webinar feed, um, talking about 2D, 3D camera settings, lights, cameras, and presentations. Uh, it's every other Wednesday if you ever want to join me for that. But uh, it's all based on this new information to make camera settings, light settings, uh, easier for you and also to add more dynamic environments uh, into these camera settings. So let's go ahead and take a few moments with this and explain some of these features live actually inside Floor Planner. So let's go ahead and maybe go to my projects and let's see if by any chance this project might be an example for us. Okie dokie. Um, so if we we're going to go ahead and create an interior view in here, always remember, you know, we're in two dimensional plan right now, 2D, and we can cross over to 3D. And let's go to 3D for a second. And in 3D, you have a couple options. You can certainly go ahead and uh, go to the orbit view as we're looking down on top of it right now as a dollhouse view or use this first person walkthrough, this man over here on the right hand side to go inside the room. Very important that you know the difference between those two. This particular project has a little cut section going on inside here. So I'm gonna to go to the settings on this in 3D for a second and turn that off, that's the cut section. And also, I want to make sure that we continue to show our doors and our renderings. Show doors. There we go. Sorry. Okay. So if we're going to go to the interior view inside here to uh, take it at eye level, first person, just select the first person tab up here. And we're inside the room. Use your mouse to navigate around, of course. And we're going to get in position with those doors because we're going to see the view outside. Use my arrow keys to get into position. And let's say there is my camera view that I'm going to use for presentation. I'm going to go ahead and make a new camera view for this, still in first person. Camera plus, camera four has been added. Here's all the information about camera four over here on the left hand side. So let's talk about some of those new features. Well, this window alone is new, uh, has some new tabs inside there, starting with, again, identifying, are you truly in first person? Very important for your interior views versus the dollhouse view, which is your aerial shot. Make sure you're using the correct one for the correct purpose. Right now we are inside the room. We will go for first person and we're gonna talk about its camera's position at eye level. You know, Maybe I'm gonna make this more like five feet three, Five, a little bit closer to eye level for me, five feet, space, three inches. And we'll change the target point used in the triangle as to what we're pointing at. Field of view is your wide angle lens, of course, and your positioning. And then we're going to go ahead and talk about the light and scene for this specific image looking outside this window. Here's the new features. Go over to light and scene still in first person, double checking that fact. And now instead of using the sundial to do both uh, how high the sun is in the sky and its direction from which direction the sun is coming from, you now have these tabs up here to go ahead and say in the pull down menu, mm, is it sunrise, morning, midday, afternoon, sunset, evening or night? Um, sunrise, some nice warm colors in your lighting. Sunset, some nice warm pink and evening colors for your sunset. And evening and night, you're starting to get into the stars now. So you've got some really, really cool features. But these are 
times of day. So if I went for sunrise and or morning, et cetera. Um, and you can also start changing in your environment. Let's talk about the weather. Hey, no clouds, nice clear sky, some light puffy clouds out there, give some uh, texture to it and or heavy clouds for that oh, more solemn day. Uh, I'll go for light clouds. Morning, you know, it's not gonna be true sunrise, but the sun will be low in the sky still. So it'll come through my window. And then let's talk about the background image. The actual environment outside the window is also changed to give you a gallery of new environments. So if you go to background image, you can select the use the scene button in the center to start changing the actual views outside your window, obviously some different environments or a simple horizon line out there, nice. And also another scene down here. And there's also still the studio down here at the bottom of your gallery because some people prefer not to have a scene at all and just like to have the white on white outside. Um, personally, I like to have a little bit of activity going on outside my window. And you can still also upload your own custom image as you did previously. So you can upload your own JPEG PNG image of an actual view, but we'll stay with the gallery for right now. And we'll hit our back button over here. And now remember I said, we've now got morning sun, so it will be low in the sky, but this direction of the sun, that, that's gonna be determined by your sundial the blue dot is the sun, white circle represents the direction you're coming from around the perimeter of the, of the horizon line. You can move the sun to a different direction and you can see that the sun will be coming through the window as morning sun at the location and the height in the sky, but definitely changing the direction to allow for a more dynamic presentation rendering. So we've got the sun coming in as morning sun, we've changed its direction. And we're almost done. Um, there is also the exposure of this indoor area where the sun that's coming in this window on this side of the glass has a, a radiance to it um, that you can increase or decrease its intensity. So sometimes you say, hey, Bob, my rendering looked a little light, looked a little dark, um, which certainly could be you know, based on your own interpretation. Um, so you have the flexibility to adjust it. I know we have white walls in here. So this sunshine is going to be bouncing around a lot in this room. It's probably going to be fairly bright. And I have no artificial lights, lamps in here right now. This is the slider over here for its exposure, the radiance um, of that light, the intensity. I'm going to kick it down a little bit because I just have a sense it's going to be a little bright. Um, and again, you can tweak this after any rendering. Renderings are coming back to, you know, as fast as 20 seconds. So uh, take a peek. If it's something that needs to be tweaked, come back here, make this modification. Um, always remember, once you have adjusted all these settings that we just did to update your camera, you always want to communicate this information to the cloud prior to creating the rendering. So I just hit update camera. And it tells you right at that moment, it has been updated, has been notified to the cloud and go for your export image. And at this point, um, this camera view is called camera four. So we're gonna go to that camera four, not current angle, because we've taken the time to create all those settings. So we always wanna go back to the actual camera four and take advantage of those settings. And a 3D JPEG image. We could do this as an SD level. I could even upgrade this project, which is an SD level project now, maybe to an HD level project. If I go for HD, I could upgrade my project accordingly and just say, upgrade it. Now I do a little better resolution, but it's also going to come back uh, still very fast. So I'm not so worried about the time on it. So there's your HD. And again, make sure that we're sending that out as camera four, 3D and hit export image. We've gone out to the cloud to be rendered. So that's the first new batch of settings for your cameras and maybe taking you a little further uh, that was noted in our description, but I wanted to share all that information with you for sure. Um, there's also, let's just take one other notation about this regarding the new camera settings. Those gallery scenes that we had for outside the environments and such, they will only showcase 
working with the first person, that interior view first person. When you're working with the orbit or the dollhouse view and you're trying to get exterior angle shots, um, these environments will not show and they are going to go ahead and your orbit dollhouse view, you're going to be able to get a view as to have uh, only the white background outside. So always use your first person view to gain access to those other uh, actual gallery views. Um, maximum camera height increase. I thought this was pretty awesome because I've worked with some double story, triple story atrium areas, um, which I was always limited as to how high I could take my first person camera. Um, so now it's been doubled. So from five to 10 meters, which here in the US, uh, imperial dimension, 16 feet originally is now 32 feet. So you've gained this additional height for its positioning. So if we go back to our project, oh, there's our rendering, by the way, take a peek at that real quick. Nice. Again, uh, we haven't completed this room by any means, um, but uh, I think you can see the sun, the quality of the image. Um, again, I prefer working with the resolution of the HD level versus the SD. Um, yeah, looks really nice, turned out well. So also let's close that out. That's the preview image. And let's talk about the camera location and its height. So if I go back over to the camera for camera four, this is where I can use the camera over here on the slide or change it numerically as we did earlier. And we can go higher than we've ever gone before. <laughs> um, so, I mean, this is not an orbit dollhouse view, but you know, if we had those walls being higher, yeah, we could definitely get uh, above or as high as you needed to, to get a shot uh, from a distance and from a higher point of reference. I think it's gonna be very beneficial. Um, let's go back. Let's see what else we have up here. Test driving the new interface. Woohoo, welcome to the new interface. I'm sure you have recognized this already. And this little notation out here was from August 11th and this is a little old. So um, ignore some of the information in here, except for the fact that yes, the new interface is live and it gave you the option for the previous beta testing, but it is no longer beta testing. It is completely live now. So you do not have an option anymore to be switching back. We have migrated forward with this better, uh, new improved, cleaner, simplified user interface. And I'm gonna guess that from the feedback we've been getting, you've had an enjoyable experience with it. You have a lot of uh, more, a lot more open space um, to be working with as you're building your model and viewing it. Um, so let's take a look at uh, the test driving of the new interface. Let's hop up here back into our project and we'll go back to 2D. And well, part of the fact is that, you know, we're in the interface right now just by being in the project itself. Um, so you have these nice floating windows. Um, you have an incredibly large environment for building your model and viewing your model. Um, and there's a, a couple tricks to this. So just to say, you know, if you're doing something with your objects and putting new furniture inside this room and you, you go searching for your living room furniture and you're trying to find yourself a bench and we're gonna take one of these benches and drag it into our plan, do some work with that. And this is getting in your way and you wanna really take advantage of this big open space over here for your working environment, just go back over to the objects tab and click it again and it'll park the window for you. So you can really, you know, take full advantage of the breadth of the size of the space that you're working with. And then if you want those objects to come back, just go ahead and select that button again and they'll return. Um, so just clicking once again over here will park those windows temporarily and you bring them back just by selecting them the second time. So let's exit out of this project and just see if there's anything else I wanna mention in the new user face back at our homepage dashboard, which is my opening page over here. Of course, it is a new stack over here with a, a 
few little changes to terminology and a few little changes to the icons themselves. Um, but again, the, the clean new environment, you no longer have a create project with the round circle and the plus sign. It's now edited up here to be a nice sleek um, tab for you to be working with to be starting your brand new project. The pull down menu over here for identifying an, uh, a specific project and making edits to it accordingly. And the more button down here for all those features that are available to it. Kind of what it was previously, but I think you find it's it's got a lot of cleaner, sleeker access to it now. Um, I'll just double check in here real quick. And I think, oh yeah, something, newer than our list, it hasn't even been listed yet, just a, a new advance over here is the finishes and paint. Uh, they used to be two separate tabs over here. So to, again, save more space on your dashboard and clean it up, you, they're combined now. So it's just plain finishes, paint and materials. So if you select that tab, you'll have the choices for your paints and also the materials tab, which now has anything that you're searching for. And then the subdivision subdivided wood, carpet, stone, tile, wallpaper, and outdoor materials. Um, everything else is, yeah, it shouldn't be too foreign, but I think by now you're probably comfortable with it. And I'll bet that you are enjoying it as much as I am, because I think this is a really, really uh, nice open space to be working with now. Let's double check our updates again. See what's back out there, new interface. Um, exposure slider. Well, we just went into that in depth. So uh, we've already addressed the exposure slider. So enjoy that. I think that's a really, really cool feature uh, that gives you much more control for the light levels. Interface update again. Interface adjustments are now turned on by default. Yes, as I just mentioned. So yeah, um, they're up and running now and you are there. And oh, that's as far as we're going to go. So as of August 17th, uh, you're now up to date. Um, from where we left off previously with this recording. Um, I think this will get you comfortable with how we are situated at the moment. Appreciate you taking the time with me as always. Looking forward to hmm, September um, and see what we can talk about posting in our next month's uh, recording. Yes, there's there's always something new within Floor Planner. The, the programmers over in the Netherlands, incredible team, taking full advantage of the new tech as it's coming out, listening to you all as you share your observations from your individual perspectives as users of Floor Planner, and uh, always trying to find some new way to support your needs and also truly taking advantage of the new tech to give you even a better product. Um, and we've had as many as five advances in any given month. So keep your eyes open. There's a lot of excitement yet to come for the remainder of this year and going into 2024. So looking forward to seeing you again. Appreciate your time. And I will catch you on the next video. Have a great day. Thanks.